So the limited inventory across the country in many different housing markets has made a lot of people look into building a new home. So whether you're looking to build a home for yourself to live in, or if you're looking to build a spec home in order to sell and make a profit, chances are that you're gonna need a construction loan. So let's go over what a construction loan is, how it works and how to obtain one in order to build your new home or your new construction project. Let's get into it. What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If you didn't already know, my name is Jay Costa and I'm a real estate builder and investor and agent here in Northern New Jersey. And if you get value out of this video, please hit that like button. It really helps me grow the channel and expose to more viewers just like you. Also consider subscribing. As I say in every uh, intro of every video that I make, we're building a community here of like-minded individuals that are looking to invest and build wealth in real estate. Usually we talk about using a HELOC, a home equity line of credit, as a tool in order to build wealth in real estate. But today we're going to talk about a different financing option, a very niche product, and that is the construction loan. So I just got back from a closing, but it wasn't your standard closing where I was either buying or selling another piece of property. This was actually a separate closing for a construction loan that I and my partner just obtained for a new construction duplex that we're about to build. I went over the details of this new build in a previous video. I'll put a link in the description box down below as well as up in the corner. So definitely check that out. So first things first, what is a construction loan? Well, a construction loan is kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's a short-term interest-only loan that covers the cost of building a new construction property. There are two types of construction loans. Number one is a construction only loan. This is a loan that covers the cost of construction until project completion. And that's when the full amount is due to the lender. This is good for building spec homes that you plan on selling after you finish. And this is what I am using on this new construction duplex that I referred to. Now, the second type of construction loan is what's called a construction to permanent loan. This is when the cost of construction is covered while you're uh, constructing the house until its completion when the CO is obtained from the town and that's when this loan converts from a short-term interest-only construction loan to a longer term, something like a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. Now, this is perfect for either if you're looking to build for yourself to live in or if you're looking to build something and keep it at the end to rent it out as an investment property. Now, it's important to know what your goal is with your new construction project because if you get a construction only loan up front and then you end up saying, hey, I want to keep this thing, you're going to actually have to get another closing at the end of the project completion. And anytime there's an extra closing means thousands of additional dollars in closing costs that you could have avoided if you just used a construction to permanent loan from the get-go. Now, as an overview, there are three main stages of obtaining financing for your construction project. Number one is buying the land. Once you find the piece of land that you're looking to use for your new construction project, you obviously need to buy it. This is going to be your first closing in the new construction process. And there are a few ways to finance this part of the process. A, you can buy the land with cash. This is a benefit because it will save you time as well as interest while you're going to obtain building permits from the town and approvals and things like that. B, the land that you purchase with cash that you own outright will also serve as collateral on the construction loan that you're about to get. For instance, if you buy land for, let's say, $300,000, and then you go apply for a construction loan, that $300,000 is built in equity that the lender, the construction uh, loan lender, is going to see as collateral and as a down payment on the construction loan. So you won't need, most likely, any additional down payment for this construction loan to get started. Now, if you do not have enough cash, consider bringing a partner on board the project. Now, if you don't wanna bring a partner in and you don't have enough cash to buy the land, you're going to have to get financing for the land. Now, some construction loan lenders also offer financing on the property. For instance, my lender, which is a local lender here, a regional lender in uh, the New Jersey area called Connect One Bank, they offered, although we didn't use it, they offered 50% LTV of land. So as long as you had 50% of the land value that you're purchasing it for to put up, they will give you the other 50% as well as the construction loan. But keep in mind, since you have a little bit less equity built in when you're going through the construction process, 
your interest rate or different terms may be less beneficial to you. So definitely read the fine print and make sure you know all the details from your lender. Now, even though you're getting financing from the same lender for the land, you most likely will have to do two separate closings for this. So keep that in mind because it will be an additional cost of closing costs because you're having to close. Once you buy and close on the land, then you're obviously going to have to get into what we're talking about today, and that is obtaining construction loan financing. In order to apply to the lender for the construction loan will depend on the lender, so ask them. But generally speaking, you will need plans from your architect, a survey, as well as any building permits obtained from the town in order to get started. Lastly, number three, you'll then need long-term financing after the project is done if applicable. This is what we were talking about before when we were talking about construction to permanent loan. Now, if you plan on keeping this property at the end of completion, you will need to get long-term financing. If you didn't get a construction to permanent loan from the beginning, like we originally discussed, this means another closing and thousands of dollars in additional closing costs that are needed that are just a sunken cost that you'll never see back. So like I said before, do your best to make sure that you know the goal of this project because if you change uh, halfway through, it's gonna cost you money. Remember, the less closings, the better. So what does a construction loan cover? Now, once again, each lender may be different, but my lender in particular that I've used twice now, they cover what's called the hard cost on the construction. This would include material, labor, all of the hard costs, the physical stuff that you have to do in order to build a, a, a home or a duplex or whatever you're building. What the construction loan does not cover, in my experience, are what's called the soft costs. This would be building permit fees, attorney fees, architect fees, as well as insurance. All those soft costs that aren't kind of included in the physical cost of building a property are not covered by the construction loan. So where do you find a lender for a construction loan? Now, you need to understand that a construction loan is a very niche product and it's very local market based. Because of this, I would not recommend going to a large institutional lender like a US bank or a Bank of America. Chances are they won't even offer you a construction loan, but even if they did, I would rather see you go to a more regional or local based lender in your area. Now, just like everything else in this world, I would just start out by Googling for construction loan lender with your area or your area code or your zip code and see what comes up there and just start giving them all a call. They'll be more than happy to help you, I'm sure. The reason I tell you to go to more local or regional lenders instead of the large banks is because the local lenders know your area, they're familiar with the builders and the market in your area, and they're more comfortable lending on projects in your area because that's where they are. They know what things cost and they know what things sell for. And since they're familiar with builders already in that area, you may be able to actually find your your builder from your lender. If you don't have a builder yet, ask your lender to see if they have anyone that they've worked with in the past multiple times that they would recommend. The lender will require that you have a builder in place before giving you the money, and chances are you'll probably have to show, or the builder will probably have to show, you know, the specific uh, new construction as well as real estate projects that they have done in your specific market in order to for the lender to approve the construction loan. They need to make sure that the builder knows what they're doing and they've done this before. And also vice versa, maybe you have a builder that you found, but you don't have a lender for the construction loan. Ask the builder if they have a lender specifically that they have worked with in the past that they would recommend. Because in my because in my experience building new construction, if the vendors and the lender and the builder all have worked with each other in the past already, they will be contacting uh, each other directly and leave you out of it, which makes it much less complicated and much less work for you. Once you get a builder picked, you will need plans from your architect, all the building permits needed and obtained from the town, as well as a draw schedule from the builder to lay out to the lender as well as you what the process is going to be how much each line item is going to cost and when they need the funding for each line item. So what is the interest rate on a construction loan? New home construction can be somewhat risky and that's because a lot of things can go wrong. There could be delays, there could be shortages, there could be price hikes and increases, there could even be injuries by uh, subs and vendors or even litigation against you. Because of all of these factors, lenders see building a new construction property as a bit more risky than giving money out on an already existing home with a standard 30 year fixed rate mortgage. Of course, your interest rate will depend on your lender, depend on your experience, your income, your credit, all things like that as you 
usual with any real estate based loan. But generally speaking, I have seen construction loans offered anywhere from eight all the way up to 10% as of today. So how do construction loan payments work? Believe it or not, I see a construction loan as a fairly similar product to a home equity line of credit or a HELOC. A construction loan is an interest only loan, just like a HELOC, and it's short term, usually about 12 months or so. And the interest that you pay in these interest only payments is based off of only the balance that you owe. So let's say the construction loan in total is gonna be, I don't know, $800,000. But your balance on the construction loan is currently at that time only about $200,000. The interest that you're paying on that loan is based on the 200, not the full 800,000. And as I stated earlier, the lender pays out the funds based on a pre-approved or pre-agreed upon draw schedule. So once you start construction at your project and you start digging and you pour the foundation and then you start framing, then you'll ask the lender or you'll request from the lender funding for each of those line items, those costs. The lender will then send their inspector out to your property, to your, uh, to your site, they will inspect and confirm what has been completed and they will base what they pay out to you based on what is completed as of that date. And what's interesting as well is they'll actually prorate what's completed. So let's say you did everything in regards to uh, digging for the foundation. It's all dug, the foundation is poured, but you're not completely done with framing. Let's say it's 25% done on the framing. They'll give you 100% for the excavation. They'll give you 100% for the pouring of the foundation. And then they'll pay you 25% of the total amount of the framing. Keep in mind as well, when you're running your numbers in regards to these projects, that the interest that you pay on your construction loan, you will continue to pay even after the project is completed until it is sold. So keep that in mind for sure when you're running your numbers and also keep that in mind when you put it up on the market to not ask for too much for the property. That is if you're uh, planning on selling it. Because if it sits on the market for six months or eight months or whatever, you're gonna be paying interest only loans on the full balance because the place is completely constructed until that place closes. And then that's when the lender expects to get paid the full amount. And that's obviously with a construction only loan. If it's a construction to permanent loan, that property that you're planning on keeping, either to live in yourself or to rent out, the money that you owe on a construction loan will be paid off as soon as you get the CO, Certificate of Occupancy. Like I said, it transfers to a more standard fixed rate, 30 year fixed rate conventional loan. So that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I don't know how many people are actually going out there and getting construction loans, but I figured I would share my experience since uh, this is now the second time that I am getting one. And it seemed like there was a shortage of kind of information on YouTube in regards to construction loans. So if you find this helpful, um, let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions or comments about this project. I will keep you guys updated on each uh, step of the process along the way. I guess next step is to start the demolition process of the existing uh, structure that's already there. So like I said, drop a comment. Let me know what you think down there. And other than that, I will see you next time.